grace and peace from the almighty God be to each and every one of you wherever you are listening and watching this morning we want to engage your spirit soul and body with the heart and the mind of God and as you watch and as you listen I pray that the eyes of your understanding will be opened that God will visit you wherever you are and cause grace to abound. There is a burden upon my heart that I want to share with you. And as we go through the journey of building a glorious church that is revived to possess the nations, we want to come to that which would anchor us and cause us to be firmly established in this revival. Indeed, we must and must and should build a church that is revived. Not just as a slogan, but as a reality. That we will indeed see and experience the revival of the Lord. And as we go through this revival, I want us to be reminded to the very roots of this revival. And I want to share with you what I have termed, come, Holy Ghost, come, Holy Spirit. And I'm not using this theme with just that expression, come. I see the Holy Ghost is somewhere and will be coming. But I'm using it so that I can communicate what I really want to share with you. A longing, a desire to have him with us a desire to experience him like someone that has traveled far away and you are longing your heart is desiring and you are saying come home come to me and that is what we are looking at and i'm reading from ephesians chapter 3 verse 20 to 21 a key test on the theme now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to his power underlined according to his power that is at work within us according to his power that is at work within us to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever amen that the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus will be experienced throughout all generations, including this current generation and generations to born. I am praying that a seed will be sown, that generations after us will bear and plug and enjoy the fruit of this seed. Again, I'm reading from John 16, 12 to 14. I have much more to say to you. More than you can now bear. But, and that is lovely. But when he, the spirit of truth comes. When he comes. And that comes the basis of my test today. Come, Holy Spirit. Because there is a promise that when he comes something will happen and this morning that which was in the heart of christ should be manifested today when he comes certain things will happen what will happen the bible says that he will guide and so point number one once there is the presence once the holy ghost comes we are guaranteed guidance when he comes he will guide you into all truth all truth number two he will not speak of his own so once the holy ghost comes we are guaranteed his voice he will speak he will direct he will not keep quiet when he comes he will not speak on his own he will speak only what he hears the next point is that he will tell what is yet to come 
He will reveal what is yet to come. The next point is that he will glorify me. So when the Holy Ghost comes, definitely the Lord Jesus will be glorified. He will glorify me because it is from me that he will receive and he will make known to you. It's Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18 to 19. Do not be drunk with wine. It's a command. Do not be drunk with wine. Which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Holy Ghost. Be filled with the Spirit. And when you are filled with the Spirit, the Bible is saying that certain things will happen. We will speak. And in speaking, we speak to one another with psalms and hymns and songs from the Spirit. Can you imagine what a life we would live if we are the embodiment of music, the career of music, that our words are like songs, our words are like psalms. We are surrounded by an atmosphere of music, an atmosphere of worship. That sweetness, that aura, that comes when there's good music. When the Holy Ghost comes and reigns and rules in our lives, our life will be like music. And I pray that today, wherever you are watching, your life will be changed from morning into music. Something good will happen. So we are saying that come Holy Spirit because there is a command that when he comes, something will happen. And so we want the Holy Ghost to come. For this year we are repeating our desire to live a life of integrity. Our desire to be men and women of prayer. A church that prays. We are looking at a church that has the lordship of Christ fully embodied in our whole being. Where we are not owned by, us, by ourselves, but someone owns us and we recognize that Jesus owns us. We are looking at a year where we shall be aggressive in evangelism. Aggressive in reaching out for lost souls. But you see, you may want to be a man or a woman of integrity. You may want to be a man or a woman of prayer. You may want to have the lordship of Jesus over your life. You may want to be aggressive in prayer. But the holding factor, the holding factor in all this is the Holy Ghost. And as a church, we dare not at any point in our life miss out on our relationship with the Holy Ghost. We dare not miss up on our desire to have him reign. And to do that, first of all, may I submit that there has to be a consciousness of the need for the Holy Spirit at all stages. From us as leaders, there has to be that consciousness. Apostles must be conscious. Pastors must be conscious. Elders must be conscious. Deacons and deaconesses must be conscious. Members old and new convert must be conscious. Even children should be made to be conscious of the presence of the Holy Ghost. We must every day, every night, at dawn, when we wake up, be conscious of the presence of the Holy Ghost. Sometimes, if we are not careful, we'll be so conscious of our dreams and our visions and our ideas. Who will be so conscious of the things around us and even our own plans. Who will be so conscious of self and the battles of life. So conscious of demons and powers and all those things. But not be conscious of the presence of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says that as a man thinks in his heart, so he is. When your heart is full of the Holy Ghost, consciousness, so you become. We cannot experience the Holy Ghost when we are always thinking about something else. And I'm saying that what will bring that revival is the daily consciousness of the need and of the presence of the Holy Spirit. A consciousness of the Holy Ghost. We must be conscious. There can be no revival, no acceptance of the Lordship of Jesus. There can be no desire, genuine desire and capacity to walk in integrity if we are not conscious of the presence of the Holy Spirit. May the consciousness of the Holy Ghost be released upon the whole church globally. May people wake up thinking about the Holy Spirit. When you walk into that office, when you walk into that room, when you pick the mic, when you press the keyboards, 
Wherever you are, there should be that consciousness that we are doing it together with him. And as long as we walk with that consciousness, we are guaranteed revival. And that is what will sustain the church. That is what will sustain all of us. So we are saying that there should be consciousness. And what kind of consciousness? Consciousness level one is building a relationship. It's letting the Holy Ghost know that we are his friend, that we love him, that we want him in our lives. That consciousness of a friendship, the Bible says that the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship or friendship. Friendship. Where he becomes your companion. You wake up and you sing, Holy Ghost, you are my friend, my companion, brother, my God, you always lead me in. Other my steps in your path. My God, who always leads, leads, leads me and all other my steps in your path. I'm talking about seeing the Holy Ghost as your friend, as your companion, as your relation. Someone that you miss every day. I pray that in the midst of the night when you wake up, you miss your friend Holy Ghost. You miss someone, you enjoy his presence, you enjoy his aura. And if for a day you do not hear of him, you miss him. I'm talking about that relationship with the Holy Ghost. Not just on our tongue, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. And speaking in tongues, yes, that is good. But I'm talking about one consciousness to building that relationship. When you miss him, you recognize him. When you are walking out of your house, you are conscious that, my friend, can you please go ahead of me? Let the church be restored to the consciousness of that friendship. Let him be our best friend. Conscious that he's our friend, that he's our companion, that he's our brother, that he's involved in every decision of our life. Sometimes, if you are not careful, we spend so much time, energy, putting in structures and systems and leaving him out. The church dare not at any time. In our individual lives, in our marriages, in the taking care of our children, our relationship, if you are not careful, you only be conscious of the Holy Ghost when you are in the church. And when you are leading prayer meetings, then you'll be conscious of the Holy Spirit. But I'm talking about a relationship that comes into everything we do. Everything. When we are at home talking with our children, when we are at the office engaging our clients in everything we do, let the church be called back to that consciousness of building friendship. And when there's a friendship, the Bible says that he will guide. He will guide. So first of all, be conscious. And what kind of consciousness? I'm talking about a relationship. I'm talking about a friendship. I'm talking about getting close to him. Every day, night, we are so longing. There's a cry in our heart. As the deer pants after the water, so our soul longs after the Holy Ghost. There's a cry. There's a desire to see him, to feel him, to experience him. At home, at church, in our conversations. And when we do that, Bible says that he will guide us. He will guide us. Aren't we tired of missing our ways? Aren't we tired of making wrong decisions now and then? Aren't we tired of moving and going ahead into situations that are not profitable? Aren't we tired? Can't we come back to the Holy Ghost? Aren't we tired of dead churches and churches that have no fire, oil in it? And it's all because we are concentrating on plans and strategies and programs. They are good. Please don't get me wrong. I enjoy planning and strategizing. But in all this, what is the role? How is he Lord over our things? Let the church come back to the guidance 
of the Holy Spirit more than ever. And when I say church, I'm talking about you listening to me, not the building. And when that happens, he will guide us. What guidance will he give? First of all, is the guidance into all truth. Church, there's so much lie going around. Falsehood, deception, fake news, fake people, hypocrites. People who come to you and begin to say all kinds of things to get your heart. You need guidance into knowing the truth about these people. People you engage in business with. People that you want to marry. You need guidance to know the truth. When he comes, he will guide us into the truth. Truth about the people we call. Truth about the people we relate with. So much falsehood around. And sometimes we fall into traps because he is not in charge. He is not leading us. This morning, may the guidance of the Holy Ghost be released upon this church. The Bible says that as you walk, you will hear a voice behind you telling you the way that you should go. Let the church come back to the guidance of the Holy Ghost in every assembly, in every local, in every district. Let there be divine guidance from the Holy Spirit. And when the church is led, the worship is led, the praises are led, the preaching are led, everything we do in church, everything we do at home, even the food you eat when you are led. And I'm talking about what happens when there is consciousness and there's a relationship with the Holy Ghost. He brings guidance. I pray that if the spirit of deception has been released upon your life, may the spirit of truth Penetrate that deception. Open up the walls of deception and give you guidance. May God guide us. I'm sure every day we take so many decisions of life. Every day, only God knows the number of decisions and the steps that we take. But we need guidance into the truth. Into knowing people's hearts into knowing people's minds, into knowing the truth about God's intent, the truth about what God seeks to do, the truth about the devil's plans, the truth about the kingdom of darkness. We need the truth. And that can only come by when there's a relationship. If not, you can be deceived because we have only two eyes, but the world is made up of the visible and the invisible, the known and the unknown. And it takes the Holy Ghost to cause us to see through. I can say that the devil is aggressive. He is wild. And he's determined to release deception in doctrine, deception all over the place. And that is why we need him to guide us into all truth. The Bible says that when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide us into all truth. He will be our guide. He will not just guide us. He will speak. He will tell us of the things yet to come. He will cause us to see tomorrow and cause us to take steps into our providential way. May God guide us into our tomorrow, into our destinies, into the things that he has ordained. Let us not just live this life and die like that. But let us know our tomorrow and be able to take steps into that. He will make known. He will reveal things to us. May the spirit of revelation be open unto us so that we will know the mind of God. We will know what God wants to do at every time. That is what the Holy Ghost does. And we must not let self and pride and arrogance and the things that make us who we think we are take our mind. Let our prejudices and and hypocritical attitudes not take control of our minds. Let our pride and our visions and our dreams and the things we think are right. They are good, but they are not the best. They are not perfect as long as it does not go in sync with the Holy Spirit. And when the Holy Spirit begins to guide us, that is where we will become fruitful. That is where we can bear the fruits. That is where the character we are looking for will come out naturally. Because he will guide us. He will empower us. He will strengthen us. He will open us to the truth. We can teach all the teachings about the fruit of the spirit. We can teach all the teachings about the gifts. We can teach all the teachings and give all the long sermons. 
But when the Holy Ghost does not take over and is not in charge, you can't be guaranteed that it will only be a lecture for an exam. We write it and we forget. But when the Holy Ghost is in charge, then we will not just teach about the fruits, but we will bear the fruit of the Spirit. May our character reflect the beauty of Christ. Where I look into the face of a brother and I can say that this is truly my brother. Because there's something inside that man, something inside that woman, that is not of flesh, but is of the Holy Ghost. Not only will we begin to bear the fruit, but we will begin to operate in the Spirit. Friends, what makes Pentecost Pentecost is the Holy Ghost. And I will not be apologetic about this at any time. That we must understand that as a church without the Holy Ghost, we are doomed. Thank God for our education. Thank God for our experience. Thank God for our contacts. Thank God for our plans and our strategies. But they are not a replacement for the oil and for the flow of the Holy Ghost. Oh, come Holy Ghost upon your church. Come Holy Ghost upon your leaders. Come Holy Ghost upon your people. Come Holy Spirit and take control of our life. I want you to know that the Bible says that we are not with wise or persuasive words. We cannot possess the nation with talk. We cannot possess the nation with just ideas and ideologies. They are important. But in this very turbulent and dark world, we can only possess the nation by a people who are loaded in the things of the Holy Ghost. There has to be a demonstration. It is not enough to talk about miracles. It's not enough to talk about the power of God. But as time, we all, as pastors, as elders, there's a clarion cry upon our hearts that let us all come back to the Holy Ghost. Let the Holy Ghost take our heart, take our mind, take our soul. Let this burden be released upon everybody listening to me. Oh, Holy Ghost, come afresh. And bring us revival, bring us renewal. Let us begin to manifest the power of God. Let the sick be healed. Let the oppressed be liberated. Let the power of God be seen in our churches, be seen in our prayer meetings, be seen in our services, be seen in our marriages, be seen in our workplaces, be seen at home. And I'm talking about a demonstration where people literally see God at work. Not long sermons. They are good. But they are never a replacement. Not beautiful temples and beautiful churches. They are good. But cannot be a replacement. Let the Holy Ghost come back powerfully and mightily upon our lives. So that when we walk, we walk with the fullness of Holy Ghost. And our speech is like music. We are so full of the Holy Ghost that as we walk about, we produce music. The words that come out of us. Are like music. Be not filled with wine, but be filled with the Spirit. When He, the Spirit of truth, comes, He will guide us. He will reveal. He will make known. Let these things not remain in the Bible. Let them be a reality of your life. Let them manifest in your life. Let them take place. Begin to see the guidance, experience the guidance. Begin to enjoy the fullness of the Holy Spirit. When we sit in council and we decide deciding about men, human beings, deciding about projects and endeavors, may the Holy Ghost step in and take over and lead the church and lead our hearts and lead everyone listening to me today. Right now, you may be sick. You may be oppressed. You may be on your sick bed. You are wondering what to do. Right now, let the Holy Ghost step in and reveal the secret of what you're going through and the solution, guidance. May you be healed, may you be delivered, may you be liberated. Maybe you are going through a torment and you are wondering what is coming. As I minister to you, I pray that grace will reach out there. I pray that the power of God will come upon you and liberate you. That yokes shall be broken, oppressions shall be released. That people will be liberated from the bondage of darkness and captivity. Let me dare say that when the church is full of the Holy Ghost, darkness will disappear. And so right now, if there's any darkness upon your life, as you watch me, let that darkness disappear. Let there be light in accordance with scripture. You see, when the Holy Ghost broods over your life, there's total separation of light from darkness. There's clarity. When the Holy Ghost broods upon your life, there's separation of the waters of the waters. 
everything begin to fall in place. Your empty land will begin to bear fruit. Your empty land will begin to bear trees. Your empty land will begin to bear animals. That is creativity when the Holy Ghost comes upon your life. So right now, as I ask you to rise wherever you, can, you are, if you can. And as I ask you to stretch your hands towards us, if you can. I'm praying that the power of God will touch you wherever. I'm praying that the grace of God will touch you wherever. Right now, if doctors don't have an answer, they don't have a solution to your issue, I release guidance to them. Right now, if you, do, you are lacking direction as to what decision to take in your life, right now, I release guidance to you. In the name of Jesus, if your work is not being fruitful, if your life is not being fruitful, I release the fruitfulness of the Holy Ghost to you. If you are so dry, you are not operating in the spirit. Everything about you is dry. Right now, I release the oppression and the manifestation of the Holy Ghost. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Lift your voice and say, come Holy Ghost. Be my guide. Be my strength. Be my fortress. Holy Ghost, be who you want me to be. Take charge. Take control of my thoughts. Holy Ghost, be the oil of influence. Be my demonstration. Let it not just be words, but be the Spirit of God. Come Holy Ghost. Come Holy Spirit. Break every yoke. Destroy the yoke of Satan. Destroy the powers of darkness. Let there be light. Come Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Ghost, take control of our lives, take control of our decisions, take control of our strategies and of our plans, take control of the church, take control of our thoughts, take control of our emotions. Holy Spirit, grant us the grace to be conscious in Jesus' mighty name. Rado Shikalamanda. Now listen to me as I pray with you. Father, I pray for all those watching me right now. I lift every local assembly within the church of Pentecost and without the church of Pentecost. Every congregation, I pray that the Holy Ghost will penetrate that congregation. That there's going to be a new hunger for the Holy Spirit everywhere from the top to the bottom. That church leaders will cry, Holy Ghost, take over. Church members will cry. Church of Pentecost will cry. The Apostolic Church will cry. Presbyterian Church will cry. The Catholic Church will cry. The Body of Christ will cry. SDA will cry. Even church, those so-called parachurches or new churches or whatever, new age, everywhere, let the knowledge of the Holy Ghost begin to cover the waters. Let the Holy Ghost brood over this world. Let all organizations, including homosexual organizations, including non-church organizations, let the world be covered by the knowledge of the Holy Ghost. Oh, Holy Ghost, take over your church. Take over this world. Cover the world as it was in the beginning. When you were brooding over the surface of the earth and you brought life. Right now, if you have not accepted Jesus Christ, I want to give you an opportunity to give your life to Jesus. And when you give your life to Jesus, He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. So right now, repeat this after me. The only way to give you opportunity is to give your life to Jesus. So please, if you have not yet given your life to Jesus, just repeat this after me. Dear Lord, I know you love me. I believe you as my Lord and Savior. And so right now, I give my life to you. That you will become my Lord. That you will fill me with the Holy Ghost. That my life will move away from bitterness and pain. Into music and songs. Thank you for hearing me. In Jesus mighty name. Amen.